Hey everyone, today I'm going to walk you through the basics of instantiating and destroying game objects in Unity. So we start off with our basic scene and what we're going to do today is build a scene in which when we click a mouse button, we instantiate a sphere that destroys itself after a given period of time. So the first thing we want to do with our scene is create a plane and we'll create a material to put on this plane. We'll call this green. Give it a nice little green color. And then we'll want to create a sphere. This will be the object that we'll instantiate. And we'll give this another material. A little red. The next thing we're going to want to do is build out uh, our spawner object. And to do this, we'll build a, we'll create an empty game object and we'll name this spawner. So spawner will we'll move to a position slightly above the ground. So we'll move this to about 0.88Y. And then we can take this sphere, move it into our assets folder to make it a prefab and delete it from our scene. Next, we're going to create a script, a C sharp script and we'll name this Spawner. We'll open this in Visual Studio. And now we don't need this start function, so we'll just erase it. Our Spawner script is going to instantiate our sphere into the game. And when I say instantiate, it's just a fancy word for create, generate, uh, basically putting our object into the scene. So to do this, we'll need to set a public transform and we'll call this spawn pause for position. And we'll also have a public game object called spawn -y. Within our update function, we're going to create an if statement that will check to see if the user is pressing down their mouse button. We do this by typing if input dot get mouse button zero. And now within these brackets, we'll type instantiate and now the instantiate function is a built-in function in Unity that takes in three arguments. The first is a game object, the second is a position, and the third is a rotation. So within these parentheses, we'll type our game object, spawny, oh, it looks like I have insert pressed down. If you ever see your text erasing like that, like when you type, it means that you have insert press down. So I'll just make sure to undo that. And you can press insert again to, to go back to normal typing. So within these parentheses, we have our game object, our position, and our rotation. So the game object is of type spawny, and then the position will be spawn pos dot position, and the rotation will be spawn pos.rotation. Now these will default to wherever we set our transform, which if we go back into the game will be the spawner object, the empty object that we made. So now when we go back into Unity, on our main camera, we'll add this spawner script. And within spawn position, we'll put in our spawner empty object and within spawn e we'll put in our sphere prefab 
Another thing I've noticed is that our camera preview shows kind of an odd uh, view of the game. So in order to move the camera, with the camera selected, I can press Control shift to align it with our view, and now it's a much better view for gameplay. So when I go to play the game, it looks like our spawner script works, but because there's no rigid body on our sphere, it's just spawning multiple spheres in the same place. So in order to change that, I can go to our sphere prefab and add a rigid body. Now when I go to play the game, our spawner is going nuts spawning these spheres. And you can see, as I keep playing, it spawns clone after clone after clone after clone of these spheres. And now this is really computationally expensive. While it looks cool, I want to build a script to destroy these spheres. Because after a while of holding down this button, I'll have generated thousands of spheres. And this will most likely lead to the game crashing. So in order to prevent that, I'll build a script which I will call destroyer. So I'll create a C sharp script called destroyer. I'll open up this script in Visual Studio. And now the first thing I'm going to want to do with this script is set a public float variable called lifetime. And we'll make this equal to 5f. This is public, so you'll be able to change this variable within the interface, uh, basically to your liking. And now we're not going to need the start function, just like within the spawn script, so we'll erase that. And within our update, <clears throat> we're going to set up a condition where if the lifetime is more than zero, then the lifetime minus equals time dot delta time oh my god and what this does is it sets up a situation in which lifetime will be counting up by seconds and so if lifetime is less than or equal to zero, then we'll call a script which I'll call destruction, or a function called destruction. So basically what this if condition asks is if lifetime is more than zero, then subtract time from lifetime. So when we start our script, or when we start our game, lifetime will be at five, and it will count down from five until zero, upon which point it will call this destruction, destruction function. We can also set another condition in our function to check to see the position of the variable of the sphere and if the sphere goes below a certain position in our game, below a certain Y coordinate, then it will also die. So we can destroy this by writing if this dot transform dot position dot Y is less than or equal to negative 20, 20 units below the plane then we'll call this destruction function again. Now we need to write this destruction function, which is very simple. All we need is a void destruction. I'll just make sure I spell destruction right. 
And then we call destroy a built-in function. Make sure that it says destroy and not destroyer. IntelliSense is giving me a really hard time today. Destroy this dot game object. Now we give that a save, give it a look over. And when we return to our game, on our main camera, we'll add our destroyer script. And we can see that the lifetime is a public variable, so we can change it from within here if it's too short or too long. Now when we go to play, we can spawn spheres, and we see Ooh, I messed up. See, what happened was I added the destroy script to my camera. So instead of destroying the sphere, it destroyed the camera, ending the game. And that's why we saw that error that said no cameras rendering. So we'll remove that component from the camera and instead select our sphere prefab and add the destroyer there. Lots of trial and error with Unity. So now when we go to play, we can spawn spheres and we'll see that as the five seconds pass, they're destroying themselves. Awesome. So this is the basics of instantiating and destroying game objects in Unity. Thanks for watching.